Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and the second release in Sentinel's re-edit Iron Man line was my own first experience with Chemical Attack's Tony Stark variants, and it's the one that got me to go buy the Bleeding Edge. This is the Extremis armor. It came out after the Bleeding Edge. Its box has a big lovely flap, it has a load of die-cast content, and this sentence has been running on for a real long time, hasn't it? This is an interpretation of the extremist armor, and having held it up next to a cursory Google image search, it seems pretty solid. I'm too casual to drop a concrete list of artistic liberties taken, but this is clearly Chemical Attack's interpretation rather than a slavish delivery of the Adi Granov original. It's bulkier than re-edited Bleeding Edge, to be sure, looking more like an armor shell and less like a techno-organic fusion. The shiniest gold and red parts have got similar metallic sheens, and they create a layered look alongside the various matte reds that surround them. Smaller details picked out in gold have some serious pop-off factor against their crimson backdrop, and the helmet sculpt captures a sexy smooth series of curvatures that bounce light gorgeously off of their convex surfaces. The whole look feels less futuristic than the visual wow factory of the Bleeding Edge suit that preceded it in this line, but in a way that feels entirely by design. Oh, also, the Extremis re-edit figure has way more die-cast content than the Bleeding Edge and feels a whole lot sturdier overall, possibly due to a few less crazy pieces of articulation engineering. Which is a segue into the posability section. A real subtle one! Some of this guy is going to be similar to the Bleeding Edge, some maybe not as much, but the uh, head up here is on a series of joints. There is a ball socket at the base of the neck, ball socket at the top of the neck, and then a straight up swivel for looking up, which does let you eventually start seeing the circuit board inside his head. Don't pull on the head. Uh, I'm saying that because the instructions have a really big picture telling you don't pull on the head and don't pull on the torso either because there's a bunch of wiring through there. Speaking of that torso, up here you've got a huge range of motion. Down here you've got a huge range of motion. Uh, not too much to reveal, though. Um, like, the layering is pretty good on the parts, but there's nothing hidden down in there. And that's a bit of a... Uh, not a bummer, but having messed with the bleeding edge, my thoughts on the extremists, who I got first, went from, oh, this is cool, to like, oh, I guess this is cool. This part's still pretty cool, though. The shoulders have got a full range of motion, and when you pull it out, like, the shoulder pad just... it just glides up. Like, this feels glorious on a tactile level and just pushes back together. With this up, I'll show you, you can move this thing, you know, butterfly joint or whatever you want to call it, but take a look in here. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff happening in here. Uh, this is the crux of this guy's, I, I think, like, you know, mechanical innards gimmick, is there's a gold piece here, and then a, se a second gold piece here, which look really cool when they're moving separately, and then a frame around this. Like, you can't see in the joint, and I like that a lot. Um, going to the biceps, they swivel. Going to the elbows, they double hinge bend. And there's some stuff being revealed, but nothing groundbreaking. Uh, this guy basically has fig arts wrists. So there's a ball socket attachment, there's a swivel, and there's a hinge. The hinge's axis can be swiveled as well. And then for repulsor stuff, this wrist piece can uh, pop up. And it's a bit of a, a sharp piece, so I, I think that if you're not too careful, this might end up getting some paint chippage on the tips. Down at the hips, these are not the Bleeding Edge hips, whatsoever. These are just... they're still good. Like, the range is great, but there's nothing crazy going on. This little side skirt here can get up out of the way. You might want to lift it up preemptively so you don't scratch the edge of the, uh, the thigh armor. But he can't quite do a full Van Damme, uh, but I do like the mechanism down here. Like, it's... It's, it's just a giant hinge, and it's revealing a, a little bit of something, but it's not like that multi-hinged glory from the Bleeding Edge. There's also a thigh swivel. Cuts with the armor. Super nice. Uh, and then there is there is this moment. This is like the re-edit moment uh, for a lot of people, which is this whole double-hinged facilitation with the... Uh, if you watch again, like this part sucks in to make room for the uh, thigh bulk. Works really well, looks really good. It's still pretty satisfying. Uh, and especially when this was my first re-edit piece, like, that did make me go like, ah, Sentinel. Uh, his feet have got big tilts, big tilts. Uh, there's actually a double hinge in here. There's a hinge here and here. And uh, it can be a little bit weird actually getting everything lined up, because you might think this is, like, the natural place to put it, but that's a bit of a, a more natural place to put it. There's a toe joint 
It's not very, like, clicky or thick, um, so this is more of a supportive joint than one you could really balance him on. But, it works pretty well. Uh, this guy is nicely posable. He's just not super duper crazy mind-blowing on an engineering level. This guy is simple and effective at what he does, and, uh, it's pretty fun to play with. And that weight of the die cast just makes him stand super solidly. But, the weirdness of his ankle joints does mean if you don't place him quite the right way and he's, you know, he'll stand solidly, if you start bumping things, he might tip forward a little bit, and then you might get paint scratching, and that would be sad. The main accessories that the Extremis armor includes are hands. Four spare pairs of them, outside of the default fists. These are very flight and or repulsor hands, all at attention and ready to... repulse. Or salute. And then there are three variations on open hands. One pair is very calm, hanging loosely and casually. Another pair is all splayed out, as though Tony wants you to know that he has four fingers and a goddamn thumb. And the final pair is all splayed out and slightly curled, perfect for grabbing hold of very large, soft things. They all swap their sockets around on a durable wrist ball with great ease. You also get a re-edit Hall of Armor display stand, complete with swiveling platform and flight-capable armature. Every single one of these includes four clear thingamies to peg two stands together, meaning you have a surplus of the things as soon as you buy your second re-edit figure. It's possible to connect these stands in a straight line or in a slight curve, depending on which way they're facing when you connect them up. Extremis Iron Man also has electronics, just like the Bleeding Edge re-edit figure, only with yellow LEDs instead of blue. My understanding is that the yellow illumination is comic accurate. That's cool. I still wish it was blue. The figure includes test batteries installed in the box, though their charge is not guaranteed to any level. So if you want to run these lights a whole lot, you might want to get some spare batteries sooner than later. The Extremis armor is a much less impressive piece of engineering than the Bleeding Edge armor in the very small realm of Sentinel's re-edit line, but it's also much more solid as a piece of action figure collectible hand candy. For every slightly less impressive joint design, there's an extra bonus point added to the tactile feeling of oomph. Paint-wise, it's totally on par and set a standard alongside the Bleeding Edge suit that has carried through the line all the way to the Hulkbuster that completed the first quote-unquote wave. And getting down to brass gold and crimson tacks, this figure seems to be imminently more available at a reasonable price than the Bleeding Edge re-edit release in the long run. Whether that's due to less purchases, more units made, or some other factor in between, I don't know. But it's been easier to find the Extremis armor than its predecessor in the line. And I'd still say it's well worth consideration if you can deal with its weirder 7-ish, inch-ish scale. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and after this suit, re-edit released a convention exclusive and a machine of war consecutively. One of those is way more interesting to talk about up front than the other. Find out which, eventually, unless you're watching this in the future and the War Machine video is already out.